Was that convincing? So I am here today to tell you why people shared phone lines with strangers. And a lot of the time they had to. This is the history of one of the strangest social relics of a forgotten technology called the party line. And it includes creepy marionettes, phone inspectors, and the meanest woman that I've never met, Mary L. Case. <laughs> ah, go to the montage. I'd like to talk over with you our job of taking care of our party line customers. Nearly 11 million of our customers are party line customers. Party line, you know. Thank you. Have you any idea what it's like to be on a party line with a, 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 a sex maniac? So this, this is, is the painful, painful awkward. Sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Are you uh, doing this? This too? is the painful. This okay, is sorry. the painful oh, oh. Jinx. Jinx. <laughs> Not so, okay. I, should I just go? Well, you, I'll just go. You go. This is the. Okay. This is the painful awkwardness of the party line in 1951. And in 1951, three fourths of all Americans with phone service had this situation. So what exactly was a party line? Burn it all down. Uh, not yet, Mary. Let's go more passive aggressive first. Good morning. In party line service, the wires are shared by two or more customers and so service can be furnished at a lower rate. If this doesn't make sense, phone companies they didn't have the bandwidth to give each phone their own connection to the central line. So houses shared a common line. That meant that they shared one busy signal, there wasn't call waiting, and also one open circuit. Ugh. Let's say someone called Mary. Well, everyone's phone rang. Then if Mary picks up and she's talking on the phone, everyone's phone is suddenly busy. If you picked up the phone in your house while Mary was talking, you heard her conversation because it was like your phone too. Sometimes each house would have a different ring to signal it. Mary got one ring, Joe got two rings, etc. Uh, or sometimes the ring was slightly different. Most people say that this system started around the 1890s and they were common through the 1960s. Party lines cost less than single lines as this old 1921 listing shows. But it was partly, at least according to the phone companies, a real infrastructure challenge. They just didn't have enough technicians and enough infrastructure to get everybody their own phone line. So they had to use party lines. We've simply got to have a private line. We'd be glad to do that if we could. But right now we haven't enough facilities for people who want service. But to me, it is not just the technology that's interesting here. It's the almost sci-fi like social ramifications of the technology that you get into when you really think about it and when you do the research. And that is where Mary Kay's comes in. Imagine picking up your phone and just hearing a conversation. Yeah. Who is going to click on that? Yeah, I mean, party lines, like do another Pentagon right. video. Right? Why is the square gone a square? Yes! Wait, sorry, what is a square gone? Click to find out, my friend. <laughs> it's kind of hurtful. Yeah. Honestly, that's better than this telephone sh Who is that woman? Some little eavesdropper on my party line. She's always listening in. Party lines obviously affected the social networks of the first half of the 20th century, but there are ramifications that I just didn't even think about until I started researching it. They could just be jokes, like this cute magazine ad where little Cupid is listening in on the party line. It's sweet, he's not a pervert, he's a baby. Or there's also this ad that riffs on party lines to imply that executives are all listening in on each other, breathing heavily into the receiver as they collaborate on steel stuff. I mean, that's good. Telephone companies had to have huge promotional campaigns to teach customers how to behave appropriately on a party line. Sometimes they included marionettes. My name's Handy. Hi, Handy. Nice to meet you. This stuff is so awkward. Let's start with this ad. You depend on your neighbor to hang up your phone. How weird is that? But really the big thing is just this universal acknowledgement that everyone's a huge creep and listening to everybody else's phone calls on the party line. Here is a beautiful little song about it. Listen to the gossip on the party line. 
Everybody listens on the telephone. They just can't leave you alone. As if the creepiness weren't enough, you had to negotiate with people to get on your own phone if you weren't already on it. One case I had was a newly married bride who tried to call her mother every morning. Now this happened to be just at the time when her neighbor wanted to order all her household supplies. So at 10 every morning, whoever got the line first was good for a long time. It finally came to a verbal hair pulling match. And sometimes this proved deadly. Here is a person in California who died because they just couldn't get through to any emergency service. Somebody else was on the party line. A few states passed laws requiring you to hang up if there was an emergency. Did they actually enforce this? Well, yes. Here's the story. A local guy saw a fire. He picks up the phone. He's like, ah, there's a fire. Let me call the emergency department right now. Well, Mary L. Kays is already on the other line. She's on the phone. And she says, Let the damned thing burn. I've got a long distance call to Rochester. The fire destroyed a woodshed and a barn. Mary got lucky the judge dismissed her after her conviction. Uh, but this was the kind of stuff that actually happened. The kind of job you do with each complaining customer will have an important effect on how well we get through this difficult period. Okay, so who cares? Why does any of this matter that there were these party line things? Okay. I, I know you're listening. Can you just hang up, please? Uh, okay. I'll hang up. I, I know you're still there. Just, just hang... Okay, fine. For one, I just think it's like crazy that this once ubiquitous part of life is totally forgotten. I mean, Pillow Talk was a huge hit in 1959. It was a number one movie. And it is based around the idea of party lines being kind of a pain. I do hate to interrupt, but would you mind hanging up, please? Who's that? The other half of my party line. Just ignore her, she'll go away. Of course, by the 1950s and 1960s, Party lines were starting to die out. By the 80s, they were a rarity. It is my two cents that we criticize modern technology as if it creates problems. We talk about cyberbullying or Instagram addicts. I think new technologies can change our behaviors and our societies, for sure. I mean, this 1935 article claimed that people stopped eavesdropping on party lines when they got radios to use as entertainment instead. That said, I don't think that new technology creates those instincts within us. That was there all along, and party lines are proof. So let us honor those early generations from the 1900s through the 1960s and remember that they too were all creepy perverts who were also kind of jerks and wanted to just see the world burn. <laughs> All right, that's it for this one. Thank you for watching. If you haven't been here before, this is a personal channel where I post history, personal videos, stuff like that. Uh, it really helps out the channel if you're able to subscribe or leave a comment. Um, I know that I talked to a couple of people who had party lines when they were kids uh, before this video. And so if you did or you know any other trivia about it, I'd love to know in the comments. Uh, yeah, last week I did this video also about uh, JCR Licklider, who kind of invented the internet, uh, in my humble opinion. And uh, the publisher sent me a copy of the book, and it's really cool. It's really shiny. So very exciting for me. Uh, all right. That is it for this one. Thank you for watching. Uh, I'm going to go order a pizza now uh, on this uh, totally fake phone that I will never use again. Okay. Imaginary pizza, what's your order? Yeah. Um, large, please. Sure you want to do this? I mean, did you even die? Well, no, I'm, I'm too far into this joke now. I can't stop at this point. Right, okay. What kind of crust? Thin crust. Toppings? You can do toppings on your fake pizza? Um, yeah. Okay, yeah. what toppings? Yeah, like on half hamburger, half Italian sausage? That sounds weird. All right, drink? Sure, I mean, since this is a fake phone call, yeah, let's get the soda. Soda? What type? Mountain Dew? Okay. Diet. That's fine. Oh, diet on your fake soda. That's sad. Uh, it'll be ready in 30. Okay, thank you so much. Bye. That's an idiot.